Hello Internet, it's Big Dave here, and I would like to welcome you to the first of many videos in our Independent Games Festival On Live Indie Showcase 2012 Game Demo Playing Extravaganza Fest 2012. Okay, I gotta get a better name for it, but you know what we're doing. We're playing some of the IGF nominees and honorable mention games through the OnLive Cloud Gaming Service. We are going to start out with a student showcase honorable mention, and this is possibly one of the most student project-y type of games that I've ever played. Just a couple of minutes into it, it was very obvious that this game was trying to be something more. Trying to be... Fucking pretentious as hell, but uh, it's an interesting experience, and it brings up some very unique questions about games, what they are, and what they can be. So let's go ahead and take a look at Once Upon a Space Time from a group of students from the Royal Melbourne Institute of Technology who call themselves Digitalis. So here we go, Once Upon a Space Time. Again, this is a student project. It is a very sort of outside the box, I'm putting that in air quotes, kind of game. So uh, I struggled with how to cover it because it's not really a game. I mean, it has gamey elements, but it isn't a game in the traditional sense. So what I decided to do is just describe to you the journey that the protagonist takes. And uh, yeah, let's see how that goes. Okay, and scene. What is this? I was on my way to a fancy dress party in Victorian England, and I find myself here, at the bottom of the space ocean. Darkness all around me. Hello, friends. Hello, starfish. What's wrong with those plants? They're dark, they're dull, they're dead. I must brighten their day with a joyous dance. Ah, they spring to life. But how am I to escape this place? Is there nothing but darkness here? Let me journey forward and look for someone, anyone. No, there's nothing here for me. I've, I've danced with a hundred plants and none of them bring me joy. I, I long for the touch of another human, for a woman, for... Hark, that shape, that womanly form, but she is bathed in darkness. Perhaps my dance of love and joy will bring her out. Our hands clasp, light radiates from our bodies, and we are one. Our dance is the universe. Let us venture forth into space, ocean, places, and dance with the creatures, the fish. These planets, they're dark and dull. They need the light of our love. We must dance with them. We must spread our dance of, of joyous love throughout the underwater space ocean. And we must... <gasps> no! My love! She's been eaten by a fish! There is nothing without her. My world is darkness even more so than before. I'm here at the bottom of the ocean. These dark creatures can understand my pain. Ah. Uh, if only the fish would return and eat me, perhaps... No, it is not possible. <gasps> the fish! He has returned! Now I find myself here like Jonah, in the belly of the beast, eaten by a great fish. The same fish which has eaten my love. I must journey through his bowels, through his viscera, and find her, if her heart still beats... I will find her. There is nothing here. I, I only see dead fish skeletons swimming around in this fish who is swimming around in the space ocean. There is no hope. There is nothing. I will just continue down until I am digested and eaten and become a part of this fish. And the part of this fish that is my love will mingle with me, and we will be one once more. <gasps> there she is, alive! But darkness has once again taken her. I must bring her back. Yes, our hands again touch, our light, our love. Oh. My love, I'm so glad to be back with you. We must find a way out of this fish. We must continue towards his anus. Wait. Is that the beast's black heart? 
Let our love bring light to this poor fish's heart. Let us share with him the light that is our love with a dance. Ah, uh, our love triumphs. The fish has shat us out, and we are here in the space ocean once more. Let us rise up towards the light. Oh, there is a ball. Others are dancing. We will take our place as honored guests here. We will dance, and we will love, and we will be loved by all, and we will end the fucking game right there. Yeah, that's that's right. Um... I don't want that whole thing to be insulting to the makers of this game, but uh, yeah, that's the monologue that was basically going on in my head the whole time I was playing this game. Um, you know, this is a student project. It, it's pretentious by nature, and it is attempting to push the gaming medium to a place that it has never been before. And, you know, this is what all students think that they can do. Uh, even on their website, they say the game is not intended to be fun. What? Uh, I think that things got off the rails with gaming when they started to teach it in colleges, and when professors started to approach it like any other subject. I mean, I would say a lot of the same thing about movies. I think movies and games have a very similar sort of rise through culture, uh, you know, just about a hundred years apart. And this really feels like one of those student films that you just watch and it's like, uh, you know, some grizzled old French prostitute smoking a cigarette, just wearing a slip. Uh, of course, it's black and white. She's sitting at a table and her John is uh, cooking in, in a big cast iron uh, pan and you, you pan around and you see what's in the pan and he's got his balls and his dick in the pan and uh, he cracks an egg in there. Then he uh, serves it out to her on a plate and then a mime sticks his head in the window. A single tear runs down his cheek and then the word Finn appears. And that's it. And the audience applauds. What the fuck? So, this is one of those games. I don't mean to be downing it. I don't want to talk poorly about it. I mean, it raises interesting questions. It raises the questions uh, that, that I think some people have been raising for the last oh, maybe five to ten years. What can gaming do? What can it be? Can it be more than just... Uh, COD and World of Warcraft and uh, can it tell a story? Can it deliver real human emotion? And there are games that, that succeed at doing that. Uh, but I think a game like this swings too far to the other side. I think if you're going to deliver emotion, if you're going to deliver something that touches people, you have to do it in a way that also entertains them. Uh, this is a game in the sense that it has gamey components to it. Uh, there's clicking and pointing, there are, uh, it's 3D, you're progressing a, a hero through a story, but yeah, it kind of gets off the rails in there with that sort of student project feel, and, and I think that these guys probably have a bright future in the gaming industry, but uh, yeah. This game is an honorable mention in the student showcase category, and it's up against other games uh, that also have interesting concepts behind them, but uh, all in all, I, I didn't find this game all that entertaining as an art project. It's wonderful. It, it, it makes us think about the medium of gaming, what it can be, what it can do. And this game's not trying to be a retail product, so it's okay for it to be less of a game and more of a statement, more of an emotional journey, more of an art project. Uh, I'm really, really interested to play Dear Esther, which is uh, supposedly a similar sort of attempt to tap into emotion and deliver a uh, storyline. So I really want to play that because from what I understand, they've done that in a much more effective way. I think these guys have a pretty promising future ahead of them. This is obviously very much a student project. It's the sort of thing that almost isn't even intended to get out to the public. Probably, well, not, I mean on the scale that has, it has gotten out. Uh, it's the sort of thing that these kids want to put in their resume and uh, point to when they go out to actually get a job with a real game developer and make real games that actually are games and aren't just emotional thingies like this. Okay, look, bottom line, verdict. This is not a game 
in my opinion. This is an experiment. They take the mechanics of a game and they attempt to utilize those in order to do something different. They're not setting out to make a game, they're setting out to make an experience. And they achieve that. They are successful in what they are trying to do. Uh, but you'll know that if you watch my videos, the main thing I ask myself about any game, no matter how graphically uh, enhanced it is or graphically primitive, uh, no matter how the gameplay works or if there are bugs or whatever, I always ask myself one thing, did I enjoy playing it? The answer here is no. Uh, it is a very special thing to take someone on an emotional journey and also entertain them at the same time. Because they didn't even start out trying to do that, they failed from the beginning. No matter how well you can execute the emotional aspects of it, because it's a game, your audience is looking to be entertained. It's the exact same thing with high art movies. So many people do not find those entertaining because of the fact that they want to be entertained by a movie while at the same time being given an interesting and emotional message. So in the end, this game succeeds at what they were trying to do, but it's just not for me. All right, guys, I have been Big Dave, and until next time, take it easy.